Hey guys, I'm Sun. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. <sighs> this is my third episode on Firefox. So as you can see, I'm pretty delighted by Firefox. It's my browser and I love it. Um, in the first episode on Firefox, we discussed how to use the Firefox how to use the Firefox preferences to configure Firefox in a private and secure way uh, using you know features that are developed by Firefox and made available through preferences. So stuff that's user friendly. Um, in the second episode on Firefox, we went about using profiles so that we could have two separate Firefox windows side by side. One uh, that is uh, super strict using all of these privacy enhancing settings and one that is in that strict so that the websites that are broken by the strict one can be viewed in the non strict one. And also that allows you, for instance, to have, you know, to dedicate a specific Firefox profile and instance to your personal stuff, which is very, very private and one to your work, for instance, one last reason for using that is if you're a developer, you can have your own very private Firefox and one that's kind of like vanilla default when you want to test websites. Um, okay, if you haven't seen those episodes, I would recommend looking at them before watching this one so you can go on my YouTube channel and browse. There's not that many videos yet, so the ones with Firefox uh, in order. Whoa. Okay, this episode, today's episode uh, is very exciting to me. We're going to be digging into uh, more advanced Firefox settings that will increase your privacy. Some of these settings uh, or preferences, as they are called, are extremely important if you're using a VPN and you don't want to leak your IP, like your real IP. Um, so what I did is um, I created a little gist on uh, GitHub uh, that goes through uh, the settings. Um, this episode is really inspired by uh, Restore Privacy. They have a really great guide on how to implement better uh, you know, privacy settings in Firefox, but it's not as user friendly and convenient as you guys watching this on YouTube. So I will go through these steps with you. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're running the latest version of Firefox. And if you click on Firefox and go in about Firefox, you will see which version you're using at the time I'm recording this. This is 76.0.1. Woo! Uh, step number two, you want to make sure that you configured Firefox for privacy and security using the first episode that I uploaded on Firefox and the link is here. I'll also link it in the description. Now, number three, uh, you want to go in Firefox and preferences and then in privacy and security. And as you can see, those are all the settings we configured in episode one on Firefox, not episode one of the series, the one the first episode on Firefox. This is so confusing. Sorry about that. And uh, so what we want to do, and this may be confusing for you guys, but we want to go ahead and disable uh, this. So by default, Firefox uh, is configured in a way where it's going to block uh, dangerous or deceptive content. Uh, now, the problem with that is uh, the list it is using to know what is dangerous and deceptive comes from Google. That means that when this is enabled, your browser will synchronize with Google servers and it will download and upload it and upload it and up to date list. And that list coming from Google means your computer is sending information and fetching that from Google every now and then and we prefer not to do that. Um, okay, so now that that is done, uh, we can close this window and move on. So the next step uh, we're going to go in about config. Uh, so let me just open a second little window here and we're going to go in about config. As it's said here, proceed with caution. Don't just change any settings uh, or preferences in there because you're going to start breaking things. Okay, um, so let me organize myself here. That's good. Um, okay, so number one, we want to take this here. So that's essentially the preference in question and you put it here and you'll see that now it's true and it should be false. Uh, that one setting it to false, it might break Google Docs. I've experienced problems with Google Docs in the past when this is at false. Um, again, you can watch the episode on using uh, different profiles with Firefox. That way you can have one that's more Google friendly. 
and one that's more strict. This one that we're setting up right now is our strict one. Um, okay, jail. Oh yeah, and before I move on, I, you know what this does is uh, there's specific events that are triggered uh, when you use a clipboard and that's something that uh, an attacker or someone that's trying to track you across the web can use to fingerprint your device. Uh, so we wanna put that to false. Uh, geo enabled by default your browser will use a Google service to geolocate your IP address uh, and also use the wireless access points in proximity of your computer if you're using wireless to know where you are that's a way to track users geographically that's actually incredibly accurate this will be the subject of its own episode so if you're into that smash the subscribe button and we'll get there in the future. But for now, we're gonna turn it off. That means that when you go on Uber Eat, for instance, you're gonna to have to write down where you are. The browser will not ask you to use your geolocation and stuff like that. Okay, um, now this one here. Um, okay, so this here is true. We wanna put it to false. Actually, did I put the jail one to false or I was just like way too excited and I just, okay, phew, not that excited. Whew, okay. Uh, um, okay, so that one, I honestly don't remember uh, what it is, but we're gonna actually go on the Restore Privacy uh, article here and search for it. Here it is. This disables the playback of DRM controlled HTML content. See details here. My understanding is your browser will synchronize with some kind of digital rights management service to see if you're allowed to view something. That means that your computer behind the scenes, uh, your browser behind the scenes is sending information that you don't wanna be sent. Uh, okay, here, media navigator enabled, enter. So you wanna put this to false. And again, I don't remember why this is the case. So we're gonna go here, uh, setting this preference to false will block websites from being able to track the microphone and camera status of your device. That is good. Um, okay, uh, media peer uh, connection, that's actually the most important one here. Uh, when you're using WebRTC, uh, and that's something that people use when you're doing uh, video conferencing and stuff like this, there is a vulnerability in WebRTC that can leak your real IP address, and that is super scary. So if you're using a VPN and you're thinking and you think that that's, uh, you know, masking your true IP address, someone could gain access to this uh, by implementing special tracking stuff that has to do with WebRTC uh, by putting this to false. Uh, we're now protected from IP leaks, and that's amazing. Um, okay, so here, uh, DNS disable prefetch. So Firefox, uh, like all kind of devices these days, wants to make things as fast as possible, and that means that when you're going on a website or you're doing specific things, uh, Firefox will, if my understanding is correct, try to predict what you're gonna be clicking on next. Uh, the Facebook native app on iOS uh, does this as well. Uh, I'm not a Facebook user, but um, maybe we'll have a story or an episode on this in the future, not sure. So don't smash the subscribe button for that one because honestly, I don't know if I'm gonna be talking about Facebook much. If ever you do use Facebook, you wanna compartmentalize it as much as possible. And I explained how to do that using the Firefox containers extension in the first episode on Firefox. So we're gonna put this here to true. Um, okay, this one here. So HTTP send refer header. So when you click on the link and you're browsing from a website to another, uh, the way Google Analytics or a bunch of other trackers, including Lickstats, the way we know where you're coming from is because your browser is sending a refer header. And the refer header is a header that says from which website you're originating from. Uh, and we don't want this uh, in the context of privacy, so we're gonna put this uh, to zero and zero means do not send uh, the refer header. Okay, prefetch next. We wanna put this uh, to false. Uh, and that's the same thing as I just explained earlier. Uh, it means that you, you need to uh, explicitly click on a link or do something for uh, that website server to interact with your computer so it's more private. Uh, first party uh, isolate, okay. So what that means is uh, this is a feature that you can enable to make sure that uh, third party 
cookies are disabled, it means that only cookies from first party, meaning the domain name you're on, uh, will be authorized. So you want to enable this. And it also does a bunch of other things behind the scenes. Uh, if you want to know more, you can go on the restore privacy guide uh, and search for it. And it explains it here uh, in detail. I'll put a link to this in the description. Okay, uh, resist fingerprinting. So that's an interesting one. Uh, as we know, when we went in preferences, and that was the subject of the first episode on Firefox, we enabled uh, you know, the fingerprinters thing. And that essentially uh, help mitigate websites that are trying to fingerprint you. What fingerprinting is, uh, it means using, okay, so someone who wants to track you across the web, um, if you're not logged in on different websites or if you don't have cookies, well, they can use a bunch of different things such as your user agent. Uh, and if you don't know what that is, you can Google it. Um, do you, should I go that much in detail? Um, okay, I'll go in a little more detail. And <laughs> uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you like it when I go in such detail. So the user agent is essentially uh, a string here that identifies uh, a bunch of different metrics from your system. So as we can see here, uh, it knows that I'm using a Macintosh. Uh, you know, it knows that I'm on Mac OS 10.14. Uh, it has a specific revision. It knows I'm using Firefox version 76. Uh, so as you can see, there's a whole bunch of stuff there, including the language that I'm using and stuff like that. All of this information can be cross-referenced with the size of your window. Uh, and a bunch of other things. Fingerprinting is quite a complex topic, but what that means is someone can potentially track you across websites without even using cookies, and that's pretty scary. So to mitigate that, even though this is enabled here, uh, we wanna enable resist fingerprinting, okay? And if I go here and I type user agent again, you'll see that it's spoofed. Uh, so for those who don't know what spoofing is, because that's going to be the subject of a bunch of other episodes, uh, spoofing means uh, masking or faking a specific piece of information related to your computer. So here we're actually spoofing our uh, user agent and uh, we are still setting the language if my understanding is correct, because, you know, we don't want to have like a Russian website, for instance, like or any website think we're, you know, in a different language. So we do want to tell people about the language, but in this specific case, it looks like we're on a Windows computer, Windows computer and we're actually in a Mac. Um, so that's one of the very many things that enabling uh, resist fingerprinting does. And this can definitely break websites that are trying to track you or that are using features that are commonly used to fingerprint users. So again, uh, you can watch the episode on running multiple Firefox instances using profiles, and that's a great way. You have one that's super robust and one that's a bit smoother or less robust for uh, websites that are broken uh, or, yeah. Okay, so uh, now, uh, almost done. Uh, if we put this here, tracking protection enabled. Uh, so that's great, that's a true by default, uh, so we're good. Um, you want to make sure it is and WebGL disabled. Uh, okay, so you want to put that to enable. That means that any website using WebGL uh, will not, uh, well, any feature on a website using WebGL will not work. Again, you can use different Firefox instances. This is recommended because you can leak a lot about yourself uh, using WebGL. All right. So that pretty much covers all of the advanced privacy features uh, that you can enable using about config. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, drop a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, smash the subscribe button if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.